Hello, my name is David Smith from Anaplan. I have a couple of questions for you. How often do you save your budget submission spreadsheet? Quite often, every day? What about your college thesis? You wanna make sure that you don't lose that information. So you probably save that quite regularly. Okay, so when it comes to ALM and application lifecycle management, what about revision tax? How often do you set those? What I'm gonna run through now is just our recommended best practice for the approach to setting revision tags to give you the best experience with application lifecycle management. Before we do that, it's just worth saying that we do recommend that before any major synchronize, that you do actually back up and keep a copy of your production environment. Using the copy and archive function, you can safely copy that model away, won't use any of your workspace allowance, and it just gives you a backup in case there should be any issues. So when it comes to revision tags themselves, the recommendation is that we set them little and often. Try to work sequentially and bundle changes up into a logical set. But as a minimum, we recommend that you set this revision tag every day. So get into a habit at the end of the day of just setting a revision tag. We also recommend that you run this against a dummy or a test model every day. There's no limit to the number of revision tags you can set. So there's no issues with just keeping on setting them day by day. In terms of setting up that test model, just in case you are not aware, you can run that through the revisions tag option on the settings tab. And there's an option now, create model from revision. So you can choose one of the revision tags you've done, create a new test model, and it will create a very small cut down version of the model with no production data or no production list. It doesn't matter from the purpose of testing that, whether you have those in or not, because structurally everything will be the same. So you can check your revisions against those. Okay, so let's just run through a scenario and see how that would pan out. We've successfully synchronized our development model to our production models at the beginning of this cycle. And we decide that we're going to implement our best practice. So we create a revision from there and create a little test model that we can use. We then continue to make some changes in our development environment. And at the end of the day, we set a revision tag and we test that against our test model and run those synchronized. We repeat that process for the next couple of days, making changes and running the synchronize. And we're happy now at the end of day four that with the changes we've made are up to date, fully complete and need to be tested. Once they're tested, we can make sure that they're then pushed across to production. So we can run that through and everything is good. Okay, so you may ask why set the best practice of every day. And apart from a good habit, 99% of our, our synchronizers are successful, but occasionally we're finding some failures that are creeping through where the sequencing of the changes are not processing properly. An example is adding a new line item, then adding that to a line item subset, <clears throat> and then giving that line item a parent. That currently causes a synchronized failure. Now our product team are working actively to resolve all these issues, and hopefully soon we won't have any of these issues coming through but at the moment there are some that do. So adopting this approach will help you minimize the effect of those issues. So let's take our example again. What we find here is that the second day that we try to run this process, we get a synchronized failure. And the best option to do at this point is to download the comparison report, which will give you a detailed view of the changes that have been made between the two revision tags. And as a reminder, this can be found on the comparison summary page of the synchronize at the bottom of the page here. So downloading that gives you the full details of everything that's changed between those two revisions. So hopefully you'll be able to see what sequencing's happened and try and maybe do split the revision into two and try and do a, syn a synchronize with maybe a smaller part of those changes. If you're struggling and you can't work out what's happened, then please send that report to the support, raise the support ticket and our team will get on it and will help you get a workaround as soon as possible. It should be said though, in this situation here, we can still promote some changes if applicable. The changes that were made between R0 and R1 are available to synchronize. So we could, if applicable, actually push those through to production. So we do have some changes in our production environment that we want to process. So let's just take another example where we've had actually all of our synchronizes of one okay every day. But when we actually try and promote the changes on the final day, we find there's a failure. That proves that actually the sequencing is the final part of the problem. 
if we actually run them every day and run them just in sequence one after the other, we can get to the same point that we want to be. So again, the advantage of setting it every day is that we can actually run two or three synchronizes instead of one, and it will actually process the changes fully. So just to recap on the benefits, there is a clear correlation in our data between the intervals between revisions and the instances of synchronized failures. Those that are setting regular revisions are having very few, if any, failures on their synchronizers. Those that are leaving it weeks of seeing more failures come through. There's less to look at in the comparison report and there's less to understand from our support team if you do get a failure, which means it will be quicker for us to find it and for you to find it to get a resolution to get you back up and running as soon as possible. You get prior warning of whether there's a problem. If you're running in a critical period and you need to make sure your synchronizers are working, you can find out whether this is going to be okay before you actually need to know, before the time critical point comes. If appropriate, you can still push some of the changes that you've made through. So working in this logical set of changes means some changes still could be pushed through to your users in your production environment. And finally, you still may be able to get to the final point just by running two or three synchronizers instead of just the final one. If you look on community for revision tag best practice, you'll see the document that backs up this slide. and We'll also post this video here as well. So I'd ask you when you're next running your development situation for ALM that you start adopting this best practice and it will give you the best experience possible. If you have any more questions about ALM, do search on the community. There's a lot of information on there or just post some questions on the forum and someone will get back to you as soon as they can. Thank you very much for listening.